right. We're going to talk about section 5.5. What we're going to do is change fractions into decimals and then work with supportive operations. So we're going to talk how to get some decimals from some fractions. Let's talk about the first one. First thing, if I have a fraction, now you might be able to do this in your head. If I have a fraction like one-fourth, we need to know that we can write any fraction as a decimal. Any fraction can be written. as a decimal. The reverse, however, is not true. Any decimal cannot be written as a fraction. Some decimals never end and don't repeat. Um, so those ones are called irrational. You cannot write those as a fraction. However, every fraction is either a terminating or non-terminating but repeating decimal. So we can consequently write it as a, a, a decimal. Now, what operation do we talk about if we have one fourth, what does it mean? Is it one plus four, one minus four? What does that actually mean? Wait, a fraction means what now? A fraction means division. So notice that when we say one fourth, we're actually taking one whole and dividing it into four parts, each of which are going to be less than a whole. Are you with me that fractions mean division? Yes. Okay. The question is, if I'm going to write a fraction as a division problem, which I can do, What goes on the inside of my division symbol? Is it the one or the four? One. Which one? The, the numerator or the denominator? The numerator does. So what you need to know is that even though one is a smaller number, it's going to go on the inside of our division symbol. So the top number, our numerator, always goes on the inside of our division symbol. So one. And on the outside, we have our four. One divided by four. Now, wait a second. How are we going to divide four into four? Doesn't even go into one. What now? We could add a decimal. Sure. We know that one is the same thing as one point zero, right? Couldn't we do that? Yeah. So let's add a decimal up there. We know that one and one point zero are the same thing. So what we're doing, we're changing this numerator into a decimal number, one point zero, and then we're going to divide it like we just learned how to do. How many times does 4 go into 1? Well, no times. How many times does 4 go into 10? Twice. Now, I forgot to do something. What have I forgot to do? Okay, as soon as you put this decimal here, you put that decimal there. So it doesn't go into 1, as we're going to get a 0. 4 does go into 10 two times. We'll multiply, we'll get our 8. This should be old news. We just did this yesterday. When I subtract, how much do I get? 2. And then I'm done, right? No. Oh, okay, I can keep adding zeros after my decimal. So bring down the zero. Four goes into 25 times. We'll multiply, get 20, subtract, and we, we stop when we reach a, a remainder of zero. After we get that, then we're done. So the question is, can you represent one-fourth as a, as a decimal? And the answer is, of course we can. As long as we remember that one-fourth really means one divided by four, we set up our problem appropriately, and we get 0.25 or 0 0.25. It really doesn't matter if you have that zero up front or not, as long as you have the decimal in the right spot. Let's try one more. Let's try negative 5 eighths. Negative 5 eighths. Hey, everybody, what number is going to go on the inside of my negative division, please? Five. Good. Now, do I need the negative? As long as I remember that this answer is going to be negative when I get it, that's fine. So I know that whatever I get out of here, my decimal is going to be negative. What number goes on the outside? Okay, tell me what I need to do. Put a negative sign decimal. Okay, I'm going to have a negative up there, sure, because this was negative. It means my decimal is going to be negative. Point, maybe I'll put a zero there. How many times does 8 go into 5? Into 5? I am going to have my decimal. How many times does 8 go into 50? 6. If I subtract, I get 2. Of course, I'm going to add another 0 after that decimal. Bring it down. 
Eight into 20? I subtract, I get 4. Oh, well, I'm not done yet. i got to keep adding those zeros until I end with a 0 as a remainder. How many times, folks? Five. Five. That gives us 40. If I subtract, I get 0. So we know that this decimal equivalent for this fraction is negative 0 0.625. Don't forget about that negative. Don't forget the negative. Are you ready to try a few on your own? Yeah, all right, well, I'll give you three on your own, then we'll move on. I'd like you to change two-fifths, nine-fortieths, and negative three-eighths from, from fractions into decimals. So we take our numerator that goes on the inside of our division symbol, we divide by our denominator. Of course, we're going to need a decimal and some zeros on that thing. And we work it until we get a remainder of zero. Okay, so let's see what happens up here. So, of course, when we set up each of these problems, we've got to make sure we set it up correctly. It's not the big number that goes in the division symbol. It's the top number. It's the numerator. So here we have our 2 and we have our 5. If we put our decimal and a 0, we know that the decimal place must go up here in the quotient. We have 5 going to 2 0 times. We have 5 going to 24 times. If I subtract, I get 0. That means that I have the correct decimal equivalent, it's going to be 0 0.4. Did you all get 0 0.4? Yes? Yes. Yeah? 0 0.4. Or 0. Either one. doesn't really matter. Okay, next up. We've got 9 on the inside and 40 on the outside of our division symbol. Of course, you're going to add 9.0. 40 goes into 90. Well, I'm thinking two times. If I subtract, I get 10, but I'm not done yet. I still have to add another 0. Bring that down. 40 goes into 100 how many times? Two. I subtract, I get 20. That means I need another 0. 40 goes into 20 how many times? Good. Finally, I get my 0. So this is 0.225. You can do the zero if you want to. It's not crucial. I'm going to write, I'm going to write them as the same thing, because they, they are the same thing. Now, typically in your book, you'll see a zero point something. That's just because the computer does it that way, and they want to make sure that you're not missing the decimal place. Usually people put the zero so you don't miss the decimal place. Because if I put point 0.4, maybe you don't see the point. You just think it's 4. If you have zero something, then you say, oh, yeah, there's got to be decimal there. That's why they put that. Okay, next up, negative 3 eighths. Of course, our answer is going to be negative, so we should have negative something. 
we'll put eight on the outside and three on the inside of our division symbol <coughs> with a decimal and a zero. Of course, eight doesn't go into three, so maybe I'll put a zero up there. Eight does go into 30 three times. I get 24. When I subtract, I get six. I bring down another zero. Eight goes into 60. I'm thinking seven times. Bring down one more zero. Eight goes into 40. I know that's five times. Yeah, sure. We, we did have a negative here, so the answer is negative 0 0.375. Raise your hand if you're okay translating fractions into decimals. Good deal. So we're moving right along here. So we know the idea. We put our numerator on the inside of our division symbol. We put our denominator on the outside. We make sure we got a decimal there. We add some zeros. We keep adding zeros and keep going until we end, right? Until we get a remainder of zero. So here, on, on this problem, well, we'd have our two, no problem. We'd have our three, just like last time. We'd put our decimal place in both spots and we put a zero. Well, let's work this one together. How many times does three go into two? Well, zero times. Six. Into 20, how many? Six. I get 18, I subtract, I get two. That means I have to add a zero. <coughs> how many times does six. three go into 20? It's going to go on and on. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh. How many times do you want to keep doing this? Mm. Well, is it ever going to end? No. no. Ever? No. no. As a matter of fact, when you get this repeat right here, where you see how we got the 20, then we got the 20 again, you see that? Yeah. As soon as you get that repeat of the same exact number here and here, that means you can stop because what this number is doing is repeating that same pattern. So we, we could keep going forever. If you add zeros, you're going to get, well, 6, 18, 2, 6, 18, 2, 6, 18, 2, 6, 18, 2, forever and ever and ever and ever. How you represent that with a decimal, if this pattern is going to repeat, is that line. That line says whatever digits you've highlighted, lined, are going to repeat forever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Is it ever going to end? Point six, 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 six. On your calculator, if you did it, you'd get two divided by three. You'd get point six 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 seven. Where's the seven coming from? Are you ever going to get a seven here? Rounding. They're rounding it for you. So on your calculator, it only has a finite space. This will go on for eternity. You could do this for the rest of your life and never end. Uh, but your calculator can't do that, so it'll it'll round it appropriately. Also, if they asked you to round this to the thousandth or the ten thousandth, you could do it, right? So point six 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 seven, you'd round it also. So sometimes our decimals don't actually end, but they do repeat. If they repeat, we can write that line on the top of it and say that this is equal to zero point six six with that line. That's repeating point six 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 forever. Well, let's try a couple of these on your own. Try five sixths. and two ninths. Five sixths and two ninths. Five sixths and two ninths, so our five sixths. If you're working on it right now, what goes on the inside of our, our symbol, the five or the six? Five. Good, because it means five divided by six. Okay, and down here you should have two divided by nine. Of course, you mean 5.0 probably with a decimal up there. How many times does our 6 go into our 50? Eight. Um, eight, times. Eight. 8 times. Good. Okay, so 0 for our 5, but 8 for our 50. Uh huh. If we get 48, we'll subtract, and we get 2. Okay, we don't have a repeat yet. So if we have to add a 0, 
Six goes into, how many times six go into 20? Three. Three. Three times, all right. That gives us 18. We subtract, we get what? Two. 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 Do we have a repeat? Yes. yes. We already have a repeat. That's kind of nice. We have to keep going. Here we got 20. Notice 6 went into 23 times. We got 18. We got 20 again. 6 is going to go into 20. It's not going to change. I mean, 6 doesn't magically go into 20 at another time. If it goes into 23 times, it's going to continue going into 23 times. So you could show another one. You need to show at least two. You show at least two so you can, you can underline it. Well, actually overline it. It's a superscript. 18. Subtract, you get two. But we're going to get that same pattern. It's going to be 20 again. So we're going to highlight that 3, 3. You're not going to highlight the 8 because that 8 is not repeating. So what we've done here is we got, okay, we got the 0, we got the 8, but then we got 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. It's going to go 3 forever. So we're going to write this as 0 0.833 and highlight that 3, 3 because that 3, 3 is what's repeating there. Does that make sense to you? All right, let's try one more. Let's get this one down too. So you got the 9 into the 2. Hopefully you put the 2.0 with the decimal up top, and 9 is not going into 2 at all. 9 does go into 22 times. We'll get 18. Subtract, we get 2. Here we go again. What now? <laughs> here, here we go again. You see what happened? You actually already have a repeat, don't you? You have the same number again. So. Here we just say, well, 9 does go into 22 times again, but I'm going to keep getting 18s and 20s the whole way through. So already I'm done. So here we'd say this is 0 0.22. You show that pattern, and that's going to repeat forever and ever and ever and ever. You okay with that so far? Okay. You know what's interesting about 9s? 9s are kind of a, a crazy number. You can multiply by 9s kind of nicely. Um, also, fractions with nines. If you have one over nine, it's going to be point one 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 forever. If you have two over nine, two 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 two. Three over nine, three 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 three. Four over nine, four 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 four. Isn't that kind of crazy? Five over nine, five 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 five. It's interesting. Six over nine, six 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 six. Well, you can see that six over nine is two thirds. That's six 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 six. Yeah, forever. That's crazy. It's kind of, nine's an interesting number. There's a lot of number theory you can do with nines. Anyway, let's try one more. I'll have you do one on your own. We'll talk about how to do this with some mixed numbers, then move on to order of operations. So here, of course, we're going to do, what's going to go on the inside? 22. All right. And 7's on the outside. Well, in this case, 7 actually does go into 22. 7 goes into 22 how many times? 3. That's 21. When I subtract, I'll get 1. And then what do I need to do? Put a, in order to put a zero, what do I need to add on? I can't just do add this. Because that changes to 220. I don't want to change the value. What do I need? Add a decimal. Do need the decimal. So notice, if you're going to start putting zeros, it better be behind a decimal. So that means the decimal goes up there. It's going to be three point something. If I bring down the zero, how many times does it go into 10? How many? Uh, one. Okay, so I get seven. What now? <laughs> Well, I get three. three. Ten times four. Four. Okay. Twenty-eight. Two. Down. How many times? Two. Two times. Are you still sticking with me here, folks? Yeah. Two times. Okay. That's fourteen. Six. Zero. Have we repeated yet? No. No. <sighs> Damn. Seven times eight. How many? My arm's getting tired. Seven times five. 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 Okay. Five. Five. Zero down. You're still going on, huh? I don't know. Seven times. Now done. I mean seven. Seven. Okay. Forty-nine. Five. One. Zero. But now you get. Aha. Uh -huh. I stopped at 8. And right there you repeat, huh? Do you repeat? <laughs> yes. Every fraction will repeat. Every fraction will have a repeat. It will happen. A fraction is going to be represented as a decimal. It, it's not going to be, un it, it might be unending. This will go on forever, but it will have a repeat to it. It has to. So you just have to find the repeat. Now it might be a long way, but as soon as it does, notice we have a 10, 13, 
30, 20, 60, 40, 50, but then another 10. That's where your repeat happens. It's after, <laughs> it's after this whole thing here. Let's see what we get. Uh, we get a one out of that, right? The next one's gonna be a four, two, eight, five, seven. Four, then one, four, two, eight, five, seven. This whole thing repeats. So 3.142857, one. So you put the line. The whole thing. That whole thing's gonna repeat. The next digit's four, two, eight, five, seven. One, four, eight, two, five, yeah, that's great. Actually, you know what this 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 number is? Is that pi? It's not pi. Pi is irrational; can't be represented by a fraction. However, back in the old, in the old days, uh, people wanted a a number that would represent pi very well. They used this one. Twenty-two over seven is the same to the hundredths, uh, and pretty close to the thousands. Pi is three point one four one five nine. This is three point one four two. So it's off on the thousands by less than a thousand. So it's pretty darn close. So this was used a long time ago as an approximation for pi. Interesting stuff, huh? I'm just aren't you glad you came today to find out that useful piece of information. So that's what we used in the circumference over the 3.14. Yeah, but we were approximating. Pi yeah, doesn't end, and, and it doesn't repeat. OK. Let's try to do one on your own here, similar to this one. Find the repeat, and then we'll talk about mixed numbers. Okay, so did you find the end of this? You still working? Okay, keep working. All right, so what numbers go on the inside of our division symbol, folks? 28. 28, okay. And 13. We'll probably have to have a decimal place with a zero, so I'll put that up there right away. I know that 13 is going into 28 two times. That gives me 26. I subtract, I get 2. I bring down the zero. That goes in one time. I get 13. I subtract, I get 7. Bring it down. 13 into 70? Five times. Five. Subtract, I get five. Bring a zero down. And you get times three? Thirty-nine. Yeah. Subtract, I get... Eleven. Bring a zero down and 
Eight. Eight times? Yeah. You said 104, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Four times. Four times. That's going to be eight. Oh my gosh. How many? Six. Six. You get 78, and then it repeats Does it? Finally? Yeah. <laughs> if I add a zero, I get 20. Oh, thank goodness. Here's a 20. Here's a 20. It's repeating. I can stop right there. This is going to repeat. One, five, two. I'm sorry, one, five, three, eight, four, six repeats over and over and over again. How many people were able to find that? Oh, it's kind of annoying though, isn't it? Yes. It really is. Aren't you glad you have calculators? Next test you get calculators on it. Yeah, you can't use it this test, but next test in the final you'll be able to. Okay, now let's talk about the three and five sixteenths. Listen, what's the whole number on three and five sixteenths? Three is a whole number, right? And numbers in front of decimal places are also whole numbers. Here's what you can do with this. Instead of really worrying about the three, here's what I know. You guys need to be watching on the board here. Here's what I know. This whole part is going to stay a whole part. So this right here, this three and five sixteenths, I know it's going to be three point something. All you have to do is figure out what the five sixteenths gives you. Three is a whole number. It's going to be three point something. Just do the five sixteenths off to the side. Whatever decimal point you get here, that's going to be attached to that 3. It's going to be 3 point and then whatever you get here. This is 3 and 5 sixteenths, or 3 point. 3 and means decimal. 3 and 5 sixteenths, 3 point, and then the 5 sixteenths. So convert the 5 sixteenths into a decimal and then attach it to that 3. Go ahead and finish that up now. 5 sixteenths is going to end. Uh, it should be a 4, a four length decimal. It would be 16 divided by 5. Oh, I'm sorry, you know I have that backwards. I knew something with fishy. There you go. 5 divided by 16. So finish that up, do the 5 divided by 16, and find me that decimal. What do you got to do in order to do this little little fraction here? What do you got to have? Decimal. Decimal zero and a decimal up top. 16 goes into 50. Here you're going to get? 48. When you subtract, you get 2. You'll have to add a zero. 16 goes into 21 time. Subtract a 4. You bring down a zero. It goes into 40. Two. Only two, two times. times. Subtract, you get eight. Bring down zero. Sixty goes into I'm sorry, sixteen goes into eighty exactly five times. So you're gonna get a five. It's gonna be eighty. You subtract, you get the remainder of zero. So your decimal is point three one two five. Did you get point three one two five? Yes. So here's the here's the issue. You had this whole number here, that's going to be a whole number here. This was your fraction part, that's your decimal equivalent to your fraction part. All you have to do is tack this part onto this number. 3.3125 is your answer. 3, 3. Point 3.3125, point 3.3125. That's the way your, your mixed numbers can be changed into a decimal. How many people feel okay about that? If you didn't like that way, there's another option for you. You can convert this into an improper fraction. Notice that's exactly what we had before, right? If you convert that to an improper fraction, it'll work out the exact same thing. Exact same thing. It's just you're, you're finding that three twice. That's just a little extra work. Are you okay so far? Yeah. Hey, what's bigger, 5 sevenths or 0 0.72? How do you know? Because I'm guessing. 
Wait, how'd you get that, Rachel? <laughs> okay, so is there a way you can just look at this and find out which one's bigger? No, not really. That's a decimal, that's a fraction. So if I, if I convert that, if I convert this to a decimal, then would you be able to tell? Yes. This one, it's easier to convert a fraction <laughs> to a decimal than is a decimal to a fraction. Because a decimal to a fraction, you have to simplify. Fraction to a decimal, you just simplify. How would you convert a decimal to a fraction? You put the 72 over 100, I showed that to you a couple sections ago, and then you'd have to reduce it. Okay? So that, that'd be a little bit more tricky because then you'd still have to do work and find a common denominator to tell which one's bigger. That's very annoying. Otherwise, change that to a decimal, then you have none of those issues. So if we change that to a decimal, we'll get, of course, 5 on the inside, 7 on the outside. 5.0, that's a point up on our quotient, goes in zero times. How many times does seven go into 50? Please play along up here with me. You're going to get a one. Bring that, that down. How many times does seven go into 10? Once. Now, we already dealt with a, a seven, OK? It's going to go on for a long time. But can you already tell which one's bigger? Yes. Yes. Yeah, look at the decimals. This is 0.72. This is 0.71. Which one's bigger? So you don't even have to convert this all the way if you don't want to. If you're just telling which one's larger, convert it to the point, the, I'm sorry, the place value, to where you can distinguish which number is bigger and which one's smaller. Of course, this would be our bigger number. So convert it to a decimal and then uh, determine which value is actually bigger. How many people understood that? Good. thing we get to talk about in our section here, we get to talk about order of operations. What, what is the order of operations? MDOS. MDOS is right. What's the first order of operation, folks? Good. And then? And then? Oh, wait. Is it multiplication and then division? No. Those are tied together. Good. Then? You remember that? And you remember how to do these rules with our, our decimals will be just fine. Let's practice just a couple of them. I'm not going to give you very many. We're just going to do a couple. Meaning like three. We'll do three. So let's start over here on the first one. We're going to do these together, so don't worry about rushing off and doing one your own. That's not a problem. We'll do them together. First thing, what's the first order of operations that we're going to do here? Parentheses. So let's do parentheses. Do it off to the side if you'd like to. Somehow we need 9.2 minus 1.1. How much is 9.2 minus 1.1? 8.1. So we have negative 0 0.5 times 8.1. What do we do next? Multiply. Good, because that parentheses is really just holding that number in there. There's nothing in there. There's no exponents. The next thing we have is multiplication and division. So off to the side, we're going to multiply 8.1 times 0.5. If we multiply 8.1 times 0.5, we get 5. We get 40. Hey, where does that decimal go? Does it go between the 0 and the 5 or the 4 and the 0? 4 and 0. 4 and 0, very good. Because we have two decimal places from the right, that's 4.05. So our answer is 4.05, true or false? Negative. False. 
Ah, so false. Because this had to be a negative, we're going to have negative 4.05. Are you guys okay with this? Yes. So really just combining a couple ideas. How to add, subtract, multiply, divide exponents with our order of operations. Now let's look at our next one. What's our first order of operation here, ladies and gentlemen? Exponents. Well, now we'd say parentheses, but that's just holding a number up there. So parentheses are kind of accomplished already. Yeah. What's the next thing we do? Hey, can you do... Can you do negative 1.3 squared? Yes. yes. Is it going to be a positive or a negative answer, do you think? Oh, positive. Good. You have a negative times itself, right? Right. A negative times a negative equals a positive. So when you square a number, that's saying whatever my answer here is, it's going to be positive. Are you with me on this? Yes. So do 1.3 times itself off to the side if you'd like. So 1.3 times 1.3. You'll need a place value holder, you'll add. You should be getting 1.69. Did you get 1.69? No? Yes, no? How am I getting 1.69? What's 3 times 3? What's 3 times 1? Place value holder. One times three? One, six, nine. How many decimal places do we move? Two. From the right hand side says one point six nine. So one is it positive or negative one point six nine folks? Positive. Why positive? Because negative times negative. Good, yeah, you're squaring a number. So negative times itself gives you positive plus two point four. Can you add one point six nine plus two point four? Yes. Sure. Do it off to the side if you want. 1.69, 2.4. Of course, we're lining up our decimal place. That's going to be a 9. A 0 will carry 1. You get 4.09. 4 That's right. Not too bad. Not too bad. How do you feel okay with our order operation so far? Good. Now, the last problem you're going to have is going to have all of those operations encompass into one. This is something you can expect on your test. Something just like that. Oh my gosh, what's the first thing we do? Exponents. Remember that a fraction implies parentheses. So this is really in parentheses, and this is in parentheses. Now for us, that means we're going to have to do our numerator first. Denominator is pretty much already done for us. It's down to one number. So when we do our numerator, we do have parentheses, but it's just holding in a number. If I take 1.2 to the second power, that's my first order operation. That's our exponent. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this as 20.06. I'm not going to touch that yet. I'm not, not yet. That we haven't, we're not doing anything with that yet. Minus, I'm going to do this problem, 1.2 squared, off to the side. Now look at the board with me, please. Look at the board. Do you notice, I should be on the board right now. <coughs> do you notice how this problem is different than this problem? This one, the negative was inside. It got squared. It went away. Is this minus sign inside? No. So I'm going to have a minus sign. Now. This is just 1.2 squared. Just do that little piece. How much is 1.2 squared? 1.44. 1.44. Very good. Divided by 10 and then over 0 0.02. Oh, question. Question. If I divide this by 10, so, or operations would go, parentheses, we didn't really have any. Uh, exponents, we already did that. Then multiplication, division, before addition, subtraction. So am I supposed to subtract here or divide here? Divide. Divide. Now you're dividing by 10, and there are some problems on your homework that kind of illustrated this. Look, if you divide by 10 or divide by 100, all that comes down to is moving the decimal in the appropriate spot. Okay, so if you're dividing by 10, look what's going to happen. 1.44 divided by 10 says, oh, this little section, I'm going to take this decimal and move it right or left? Left. Times by 10 would be right. Divide by 10 is left. So this is 20.06 minus, I'm going to put a zero up there just so we, we see the decimal, 0 0.144. Okay, you tell me. What's the next operation I'm going to do? Subtract. 
Definitely subtract. So do 20.06 minus 0.144. Do that for the side if you'd like. Just got to line up those decimals. Of course, we'll need to add a zero over here, which means we're going to have to borrow. So we'll get a six in the thousandths place, a one in the hundredths place. We're going to need to do a double borrow for that one, though. So that becomes a one. This becomes a nine. This becomes a 10. We subtract one, we get nine. Of course, we have that decimal, 19.916. Were, were you able to get that? Yeah. Yes. Raise your hand if you feel OK with it so far. OK, I'm assuming if you're not raising your hand, you don't really feel OK with it. Are you OK with it? OK, good, good, good. So our numerator right now is 19.916. Our denominator is 0 0.02. What's it mean when I have a fraction 19.916 over 9? So set up your division problem. What goes on the inside? And 0 0.02. Hey, we've done this already. We've done all this stuff already. Now we're just putting it all together in an order of operations type problem. Do you need to move your decimal place? Yes. yes. How many spots? Two or three? Two. Two. To the right. So this dictates what you do. Move it two spots to the right. Move this two spots to the right. So instead of 0 0.02, we have two. Instead of 19.916, we have one. Nine, 91.6. Then divide. Make sure our decimal place goes up here as well. Go ahead and finish that off. Okay, so let's see what happens. 2 doesn't go into 1, but it does go into 19. Looks like 9 times, I get 18. Subtract, I get 1, bring down that 9. Again, I get 9. Goes in 5 times, I get a 10. I subtract, I get 1. If I bring down the 6, that goes in 8 times. Our answer is going to be 995.8. How many people got 995.8? Good, that's fantastic. That's as far as we go with the order of operations. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about that's on your test, last thing we got. We're going to talk about how to solve some <laughs> equations with decimals. We're going to do this for a couple minutes.